Money, Power, and Monetary Regimes by Pavlina Cherneva. Introduction. Few institutions are as important to human welfare as the institution of money. Fewer still are as grossly misunderstood. Our knowledge and understanding of what money is, where it comes from, and what it does is littered with pervasive myths. Footnote 1. The use of the term money itself has been problematic, as it means different things to different people. Some economists use it to refer to liquidity, others treat it strictly as an object, yet others emphasize its abstract nature as a unit of measure. This paper aims to remedy this confusion. Among these myths are one, that money is a creature of the market born out of the necessity to facilitate barter. Two, that money is an object usually of some intrinsic value, derived from precious metals, that is easily transportable and divisible. And three, that in and of itself, money has little economic significance, it is neutral, serving only to simplify transactions by leaving employment, consumption, and investment decisions unaffected. These myths pervade mainstream economic theory and are known as the medalist view of money. They lead to several problematic assumptions and methodological practices within economics. First, since money is considered to be a market phenomenon, the state's control over the monetary system is treated as a significant market intervention that reduces market efficiency. Footnote 2. See work on the inefficiency of seniorage. Freeman, 1993. Second, if money is an object of intrinsic met metallic value, it is assumed to be inherently scarce. From here, due to the scarcity, it is argued that government spending crowds out private consumption and investment. Additionally, the state's monopoly power over the currency issue is seen as a consequence of the state's appropriation of private monies that must be constrained at all costs, as the state, it is claimed, has the perverse incentive to overspend and debase the currency. Finally, because money is neutral, conventional economic models are entirely void of money, finance, debt, or default. Though the medalist view of the origins of money dominates mainstream economics, it finds no support in any of the academic literature from history, anthropology, numinate numismatics, sociology, Assyriology, religion, and others. Debunking the conventional story is crucial as it upends all of the above pro propositions and illuminates the modern monetary system in ways the conventional view cannot do. This paper presents a historically grounded analysis of the origins of money to illustrate that money predates markets. Not only is it not a creature of the market, but a strong case can be made that money is instead a creature of the state, however broadly defined. This proposition stands at the heart of the charterless or modern money approach to money. This paper extends an earlier analysis of charterlism, Cherneva 2006, and defines money as a power relationship of a specific kind, namely a social credit debt relationship that is codified by some authority or institution of power, be it an ancient religious authority, tribal chief, or an early administrative body, such as a Mesopotamian palace or a Greek polis, and later a monarchy, colonial power, or a modern nation state. Far from being a simple medium of benign exchange, the history of money as a creature of the state indicates that it is instead a means of distribution, a tool of transferring real resources from one party to another, subject to the power relationship of the hi specific historical context.